today, Big Bang Headaches reveals household polarization. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, Web Notice Post, covering finance and property news. Well, the CBA advanced after delivering a record profit today with a buyback and an increased dividend, which offset caution from Chief Executive Officer Matt Cummins on the fragile economic outlook. But Goldman Sachs analyst Andrew Lyons, who has a sell recommendation on the share, said the firm's capital position topped its expectations. But there was one chart which really underscored again the unequal nature of the impact of higher rates and lower savings and incomes on households. And once again, younger households are being squeezed compared with older households who are in fact benefiting from lower loan exposure and higher savings, which allows for spending growth compared with the younger cohorts. Consumer arrears increased in recent months, but still remains historically low, reflecting low unemployment and high levels of consumer savings and repayment buffers, according to the bank. And they also talked about actively managing their mortgage portfolio and walking away from cash back mortgage switching offers as margins came under pressure. The firm expects competition, consumer deposit switching and higher wholesale funding costs to remain headwinds to margins and the lender cited the ongoing costs of living pressures for higher loan impairment expenses. This will be partially offset by the benefit of higher interest rates, the statement from the bank said. CBA's stingy dividend payout was just 74%, and a relatively small 1 billion Aussie dollar buyback means that they hold $5.6 billion of surplus capital, which suggests the bank is keeping its powder dry for a worsening credit outlook and reflecting a potentially big impairment uptick. Cash profit climbed to 10.2 billion Aussie dollars and the country's biggest lender said it will begin this 1 billion Aussie dollar stock buyback while paying a final dividend of $2.40 per share. And meanwhile, common handed investors a dose of caution by setting aside more cash for troubles brewing in the economy. In the end, the CBA bank shares rose relative to the S&P ASX 200. And, and I think we can construe from this that the nation's lenders were buoyed by higher borrowing costs over the past year that so far have been accompanied by few economic shocks and an ultra low unemployment rate. But it's been a period of intense competition for home loans and the investors are weighing whether the good times will give way to further margin pressure and more signs of stress on families and businesses. The Australian economy has been resilient with the tailwinds of a recovery in population growth, relatively high commodity prices and low unemployment, Commons said in a statement. However, there are signs of downside risk building as rising interest rates have a lagged impact on mortgage customers and other cost of living pressures become a financial strain on more Australians. The bank said it's continuing to manage headwinds after a peak in net interest margins in late 2022, and the gauge of profitability dipped by five basis points from the first half of the year to 2.07%. We are seeing consumer demand moderating and economic growth slowing, and we are closely monitoring the impact of reduced discretionary spend, particularly on our small and medium-sized business customers, Common said. And I think this is the point that CBA's report this time highlights the differential move across different types of households. Those would be mortgages, of course, being worse hit. Also pressure on small businesses and also pressure on the bank as well in terms of margin compression as more households get into difficulty. So we should expect to see higher provisions in the months and quarters ahead as banks come to terms with the risks that are clearly in the headlines but have yet to hit. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.